Okay. Hello? Yeah, the mic is on. All right, thank you, uh, Cutter and Jonah, for the fireside chat. So next, uh, we have Oren Katz, CEO of Starkware, to kind of um, finalize the ZK section. Uh, so let's welcome um, Oren to the stage. And the talk is StarkNet, bring Bitcoin and Ethereum together. So let's welcome him. So hi, uh, I'm Warren from Starkware. Uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, indeed, I want to share with you uh, our plan of actually bringing Bitcoin and Ethereum together through StarkNet. Uh, so StarkNet is actually the first general purpose uh, uh, ZK rollup that was deployed on Ethereum uh, back in 2021. It's live since 2021. Uh, and we also plan for it to actually be the first ZK rollup that actually settles to both Ethereum and Bitcoin. And that's what I want to talk about here. This will actually enable both networks, both Bitcoin and Ethereum, to scale uh, a lot more than they can today. And it will open up lots of, of uh, new opportunities, uh, liquidity of a, a wider variety of ac assets, and new DeFi opportunities. I'll touch some of that soon. Now, these are all nice things on the infrastructure level, but that, those are only means to an end. And the end is actually to make crypto or make blockchain mainstream and to bring uh, a large number of users to be actually using blockchain. Because to be frank, if you look at blockchain today, it's a really cool technology, but really one that hasn't lived up to its promise. Most people aren't using blockchain today. So probably the main reason for that is that there aren't enough killer apps that enough people actually want to use. Uh, but that's probably a lot because, or at least up until recently, uh, the infrastructure wasn't really ready for that. Uh, but I, I do believe it is getting there now. Uh, and I think this will play a large part in that. So why would that be good for, for Bitcoin and for Bitcoiners? Uh, so first, I'll, I'll go back to, to Satoshi's original vision to the white paper. And, and the vision there was a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So what he was seeing is this trustless network that anybody and everybody can use, uh, where you could actually go into the store and pay with Bitcoin. Now, if you look at Bitcoin today, you can't really do that, right? Now, the main reasons you can't are probably the three main ones are scale, cost, and UX. So this, this shows the scale aspect. The, the red, uh, red line that you see over here is the uh, average uh, transaction cost that you see on Bitcoin in the last few years. Now, this is not something that you'd want to pay if you're going to a shop and pay it. Uh, on the other hand, if you look at the blue line underneath it, that's the actual cost of StarkNet, which is a ZK rollup on top of Ethereum during the same time. Now, there is a reason why uh, this is a lot uh, less expensive and also uh, why, okay, I'll, I'll go over the next slide and say it here as well. This is a, a similar graph of the maximal throughput of both Bitcoin and StarkNet during the same time. I guess you know these numbers, so Bitcoin can only enable something like 8, 9, 10 TPS. And I guess we'll all agree that you can't really build a mass production system on a network that can only do up to 10 transactions per second. And what you see here with StarkNet at the same time, now these are numbers from production. These are not estimates or lab measurements that we've done. These are things on StarkNet mainnet, actual usage of a real life system in production. Now, why is that possible in StarkNet uh, where it's not really possible in other chains or, 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 uh, or roll-ups? And, and here it's a, it's a short uh, first principles explanation. So why is there, a, uh, generally, why is there a, a, a scale limit in, in blockchain altogether? And that's due to the fact that blockchain believes uh, in, in the slogan, the trust don't verify. So we want anybody to be able to know what's happening in the network without the need to trust anybody else. So anybody could run, let's say, a Bitcoin full node. And each full node basically verifies all the transactions in Ethereum, that's the, uh, in Bitcoin. That's the way Bitcoin does it. That's the way Ethereum does it. And now, since we want anybody to be able to run a full node, even on a weak laptop or a mobile device, we can't have too many transactions because you won't be able to re-execute all of them on this weak device. So that's why they typically just limit the throughput of the network, and that's also why the costs are so high. Now, the only way I know basically around that is using ZK proofs. And ZK proofs are these neat uh, mathematical, mathematical inventions that uh, some of our founding team actually took part in academia and actually uh, setting up. A and it goes as follows. These are uh, protocols where you have two sides, uh, a, a prover and a verifier. And the prover wants to convince the verifier that they, the prover, has done some complex computation correctly. 
That could be, for instance, a long list of uh, transactions that they've done. So in addition to actually running the computation, the prover also does some additional work and generates a proof, a zero-knowledge proof that it sends to the verifier. And the verifier, just by looking at the proof, can tell whether this, the computation was indeed valid or not. Uh, two neat things about this. One is that there's no real way for the prover to cheat uh, the verifier. So if the computation is indeed not correct, there's no way to produce a valid proof that the verifier would accept. And the second nice thing is that the verifier is a lot less expensive than running the original computation. So if I want to verify a very long list of transactions, I don't need to re-execute them. I just need to uh, verify a single proof, which is a lot less work. Formally in Stark, which is the protocol that we use and most of our competitors as well, uh, the verification cost is polylogarithmic with regards to the original computation, so a lot less expensive. This way, you could have a full node running and verifying a large number of transactions without the need to re-execute them, and now you could have a lot more throughput, and also the cost will be lower. So this is what uh, zero-knowledge proofs do. This is what we're doing at StarkNet since 2021. Uh, by the way, it, it not only says that you could do a lot more transactions, it also says that you could do much more complex computations on-chain, things that you can't do on EVM altogether, which is useful for some use cases, so for instance, AI. So rolling back, one of the main reasons, or two of the main reasons Bitcoin can't really scale today is that the costs are too high and the throughput is very limited, and basically StarkNet and Zero Knowledge Proof solve that. Now in terms of UX, okay, I'll start, start with a short video. Or not. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, let you imagine what the video here shows. W but basically what I want to show, there are a few neat inventions that you could do on StarkNet uh, that actually made the UX a lot more Web 2-like. Uh, one of them is that we have account abstraction, meaning basically every smart contract, uh, sorry, every account, every user account on StarkNet is basically a smart contract, which means you could do a lot of neat stuff such as uh, additional cryptography for signing transactions. You could support bio IDs and face IDs. This is what this video is supposed to show. You could have transactions uh, that, that you don't need to sign, like you, you could uh, do stuff such as session keys where the user pre-approves a certain session and then it doesn't need to sign every individual transaction. You could have things such as Paymaster where actually somebody else can pay the gas fees for the user. This could be useful in a bunch of things. So one thing is that maybe if the user wants to pay in a different gas token than the network accepts. For instance, a Bitcoin user may want to pay their fees in, in Bitcoin. And the paymaster, that could be done through the paymaster. Some apps could actually use that in order to subsidize the gas fees for the users. This all boils down to now it is possible with this new technology to actually, for app developers to actually build apps that, that give the users a web 2 UX. It's not clunky as, as like a blockchain used to be. Yeah, this is another movie that doesn't work. Uh, now, for Bitcoiners, if you think about it today, there's not that much that they could actually do with their Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network. Now, if they have a trustless layer two, they could securely actually do all these stuff over there, and that opens up uh, uh, a lot of new opportunities. So they could stake their Bitcoin. Staking is something we already have live on StarkNet as part of our decentralization effort. They could trade a lot more uh, easily. Uh, they could lend, they could borrow against their Bitcoins, et cetera, et cetera. Like the opportunities are endless. Uh, in Ethereum, we're customized to all of this, but Bitcoiners don't generally have access to all this wealth. Okay, so this is why we, th we believe this is very good for Bitcoin and for Bitcoiners. Uh, why is this good for, for Ethereum and, and for Ethereans? So probably the main thing uh, today, the, the digital gold of Bitcoin and Bitcoin assets is pretty much off limits to, to Ethereum, to the world computer and anything that's built on top of it. Now imagine if you have a single network uh, with a shared pool of all these assets, both Bitcoin and Ethereum, that you could trustlessly tap. Uh, imagine the implications for, for capital efficiency and for DeFi in general. There's so much that you could do and, and so much uh, liquidity and so much users that could actually take advantage of that. And the second main point is actually security. So layer twos derive their security from the underlying layer. Now imagine if you have a layer two that doesn't just get, let's say, Ethereum security like Sartnet gets today, but it actually settles to both security and Bitcoin, so it's actually secured by both. 
So just to recap what I've said so far, the main thing that we believe that this will bring to both Bitcoin and Ethereum, but to, to blockchain in general, is that it'll enable all of this to actually enjoy hyperscale at low cost, a Web2 like UX, all while not compromising on security. Now, now why, why us? Why, why should you trust us that we were able to do this? This is another movie that probably won't work. Okay, this is actually Ali Ben Sasson, who is our CEO. When uh, He was talking at a Bitcoin 2013 conference in San Jose, and he was uh, uh, telling uh, Bitcoiners about this wonderful new invention called Zero Knowledge Proofs and Starks, and with some ideas on how this could actually be used to the benefit of the Bitcoin community. Uh, so we're like, we're part of the OGs in, in this community, and... Uh, when we started out with Starkware, that was later than that, was seven years ago, uh, and we came out with this idea of a ZK rollup to actually scale blockchains, uh, we first looked at Bitcoin. But at least back then, we couldn't find a way of actually implementing the app on top of Bitcoin script. Uh, but today, or in the, in the last year, when people are now talking about reinstating OpCAD into Bitcoin and with all the research that's been done in the area, we do have a sense of how we actually can do that over Bitcoin. Uh, so one thing uh, that we have shown in the past is that there are many things that we have not only innovated and initiated, but we can also ship them. So we don't just talk, we actually do what we, we say that we're going to do. And here are just some examples. So it's starting with Stark itself, the protocol that, like I said before, we're using pretty much all, all the industry is using today, uh, which was conceived by, by uh, our team. Uh, through this was, I think, the first ZK rollup that was actually deployed anywhere on Ethereum uh, was StarkX. It was before even StarkNet. It was an app-specific rollup that was used by uh, applications such as DYDX and Immutable and Sora are still still used to this day. Uh, and then through, I'm not going over all of them, but j just touching some of them uh, through StarkNet, which was the first general-purpose ZK rollup on, live on Ethereum since 2021. Uh, more recently, so Circle Stark is a new innovation. In, uh, in theoretical proof theory that is actually uh, enables us to build a lot more, lot more efficient provers. And Stu, that's the name of our uh, next generation prover that we've announced actually last year in Denver and is coming to production soon that's going to uh, provide much, much more efficient proving capabilities, not only than our previous ones, but more than anything that's out there today. Uh, and of course, uh, the ability to actually settle a layer two trustlessly to Bitcoin. So we do believe that through this, StarkNet will enable uh, Bitcoin, uh, all this wealth that uh, we're accustomed to in the Ethereum world uh, and more, uh, while not compromising on the values of Bitcoin, which are very, very important uh, and have always been important to us as a team as well. So we've always taken care that everything that we built is the highest level of security. Uh, and we also strive to build something that is completely trustless and decentralized, so trustless on top of Bitcoin, we'd need OpCat for that. But once we get, if, if and once we get OpCat, we do know how to build a fully trustless uh, uh, layer two on top of Bitcoin that's not relying on any, any trusted party in, the, in between. Now, StarkNet today is not yet fully decentralized, but it is, it is well on its way there, uh, both in terms of operating the network and building it. Uh, and I think we're probably the only layer two is going down, down that path. Uh, where we want to get is to a situation where even if Starkware ceases to exist, the network will hardly be affected. Starknet could just continue going on, both in operation and in development. Uh, and we very much believe in both Bitcoin and Ethereum. And because of that, uh, and recently we have uh, accumulated a strategic reserve for ourselves of both Bitcoin and Ethereum assets. So this wraps up most of what I want to say. Uh, we do believe that this is the high road to actually getting mass adoption for blockchain. Uh, but the one thing I want to add is that most of what I spoke about so far was infrastructure. And infrastructure is interesting. It could be cool, but it's really worth nothing as long as there aren't any applications on top of it that people actually want to use. And here I turn to you, like if there are people out there who are building or thinking about building applications, uh, and some of these capabilities may be useful to you. Uh, we're always on the lookout for, for strong teams that build, uh, ho hopefully, uh, innovative apps that will capture uh, uh, real needs of real people and businesses. So if you're thinking or building something like that, by all means, come and talk to us. And uh, if you want to hear more about this or just talk to us about this, we are hosting an event tonight along with Xverse and, and the Catbird Hotel. You could scan this and register. And that is it.